In the days when Babylon was the greatest city on earth, mankind lived in placid ignorance of the grandeur, the vastness, and horror of the cosmos. Yet such tranquility was not meant to persist. Hello. I see that your trip through the void has brought you safely to the steps of Lahim, home of Vorpal Tales, where we present you a plethora of terrifying tales and awesome adventures for your viewing pleasures. I am Dwayne at Made of Kimchi, and I will be your arbiter for this evening. This is the premiere, number one, of Black Void Under Nebulous Skies. If you enjoy what we dish out here on Twitch, make sure that you seek us out on the internet, and don't forget to follow us. Check us out on our archives, on our YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe and hit the bell. Make sure to... Make sure that you visit our webpage, whirlpooltales.com, with links to all of our social media, our Discord, and our Patreon. Check out our calendar to ensure that you don't miss any of our favorite shows, as many changes will be happening at the beginning of September. If you guys are looking to increase your RPG and dice repertoire, make sure that you check out the affiliate link again on our webpage, and check out all the things offered by Hitpoint Press, QU Empire, and Gem Hammer and Sons. Also, Check out the merch store. Get your favorite Vorpal Tales logo smacked all over probably needless things. Our <laughs> shout outs tonight go to Astral Tabletop for the virtual gaming space that we use 95% of our games. A thank you to Modifius and Black Void Games for bringing the wonders of the void to our tables. A special thanks to N8Mid for the custom character sheets that we are using tonight that you too can use if you use Astral Tabletop. A thank you goes to Levy Rebellion, a nonprofit group that empowers marginalized groups through the arts. Please be sure to check out their website, lovyrebellion.org. As always, much love goes to our Patreons. From the Snicker Snacks to the Jabberwockies, you guys help keep this project moving forward. And last but not least, thank you to all of our subscribers, our viewers, and our fans. We love you very much. But now, we must meet the players who will be facing the horrors of the void. Heroes? Question mark? Introduce yourselves. Tell everyone where you can be found, and we'll leave what you'll be playing here in a second. Hello, my name is Rachel. I am Stolen Fires pretty much everywhere, and I will be playing a void-marked blood mage. Tyler, Pillar Check is online. And I will be playing something extremely exotic. Mare's muted. I'm muted, but now I'm not. My name is Mare. You can find me at Oh Hello Mare on Twitch and Twitter. And this is my first time playing in this universe. So we'll see what happens. Hello. They call me Kisama. You can find me on Twitter at Trukisama, and I will be playing some sort of mystic. Who knows? Hey, I'm Corey, aka Narf on the interwebs, and uh, today I'm going to be creating a character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, hi, I'm Savannah. You can find me online at Miss Miss Emo Fox. Um, I will be playing someone from the far reaches of the universe who is also a Void Captain. Awesome. And as my script says, do the recap now. But we have no recap because this is the first episode. The prelude, if you will. We will be creating characters for the first half of our show, and hopefully, if it, we don't get too bogged down in it, we will be starting our actual campaign. Now, for everyone at home who has never played Black Void, Black Void is a D12 system. Very few of those. Most of the rules will be made with a D12. Uh, some of the attacks and damage uh, do revolve around D8s and D6s, but your main die will be a D12. The character creation for Black Void is a point-by system based on the uh, starting experience of your character. For this specific campaign, we will all be starting at a depth level, which gives us a total of 68 points to play with. So, 
So, let's start with some point distribution. So, for Adepts, uh, like I said, you get 68 points total. 32 of those points must be put into your traits. Uh, for everyone at home, traits are actually, for all other games, <laughs> are your attributes. Black Void likes to switch up the naming system a little bit. So those 32 points must be distributed between their agility, your intelligence, persuasion, presence, willpower, strength, stamina, and awareness. None of these can have a score less than one, so you have to put at least one point into every category. And because we are adepts, we can go up to six. Caveat. You pick any of the background packages for ancestries from the new book that comes with this campaign. Your attributes are different. Some will be higher than six. Some will be lower. Yes. Sure you check the page for your entry. So since Tyler has already pretty much completed his character, let's start with Tyler. How did your distribution go? So. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> Me, so this might take a minute. I am Varen Kin, which is on page 26 of the BBG preview guide. The other players. Uh, it's a 12 point character background, which I bought down to three with horrible detriments. Uh, you can find detrimental backgrounds on page 28 that give you points back. I told Dwayne I wanted him to make it hurt, so I have a lot. I have a horrific secret I am not aware of. Slowly driving me insane. I'm pursued by such horrific secret. I have an exotic illness that can't be cured because of it. And I have very strange muscle spasms. However, uh, this particular species is the most rare in this particular setting. In the capital city of the biggest world in creation, there are two of us, of which I am one, that are known to exist. Uh, this particular non-human side of the lineage uh, reproduces in groups. One male fertilizes the eggs from several females, and then fertilizes one egg that's created from several females, from which then offspring is born. So for humans to be accepted into a clutch is an extremely rare thing and a very high honor. Like being with an elf in Tolkien, but more intense. Uh, cerulean blue skin, five eyes and a fan across the top of my head. Hair is somewhere between dreadlocks and tendrils. Tall and thin. Incredibly hard to make long term connections with this sort of species because they're very independent, but when they do, it's for life and it's a very deep connection. And they are extremely in touch with the void. I start with a void enlightenment of four and eight void enlightenment powers. Uh, that doesn't count my. No, three. It's four because I picked a void world for my origin. So, I was born to a clutch on one of the uh, barren homeworlds deep in the void. This particular character is going to be a mystic, not a Fuhrer, who specializes in mind and void as his spheres. Also the party face. I have a high charisma and a supernatural magnetism that I can turn on and off at will. Literally glows like a halo around my head when I activate it and terrifies or awes normal people and some alien species. I also have full access to every part of the city and am the highest possible starting cast. But no resources except what my cast gives me. What do you want to know? Arbiter. I mean, that was pretty much all of it. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's move on to Rachel. Hey. Uh, so... Go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't want to break. I didn't want to <laughs> cut you off there. Oh yeah, um, it's fine. Uh, so my character background is nowhere near as detailed as Tyler's. Um, the general outline is that this character was uh, sent to, born on, probably born on a colony world out in the void. Uh, the colony failed. Uh, haven't come up with a reason why, uh, but pretty much everybody died, 
And my character essentially taught herself blood magic in order to survive. Uh, was eventually picked up, uh, rescued, I believe, by Savannah's character, uh, who's captain of her own ship. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, working on some goals for her that uh, will probably make themselves apparent. Uh, anyway, since I am uh, going to be doing the blood mage thing, I did high intellect, high willpower, and then reasonably decent uh, agility, awareness, stamina, and strength, and like no persuasion or presence. I should never try to convince anyone of anything. <laughs> I should point out too. So we have an idea of connections that were pre-made because I know you asked us to somewhat communicate about it. My character has been have deep and abiding friendship with Rachel's for a long time. We are of the opinion that her and I usually know best because most people are morons. And Fair enough. <laughs> I have been in a torrid romantic relationship with Savannah's character for five years ever since I was hired to navigate her boat through the void the first time. Okay. Making notes. So, for those who actually, well, let's let's move on to Savannah and her character concept. Then we'll get to the uh, the other three. Oh no. <laughs> um. Hi. Uh. I haven't come up with a name. Uh. <laughs> She is essentially a self-made woman. She is from uh, the Outer Reaches. She's from a deep world. Um, she has established her own uh, business uh, and ship within one of the um, within one of the uh, core worlds, um, since they're kind of like the hubs. Um, uh, she, uh, I bought up the highest rank of cast and the highest rank of resources. Um, so she is very well off. Um, so with that, she's basically just allowed to take whatever jobs she wants, including like rescue missions for colonies such as Rachel's. Um, she, uh, I took up um, such attributes as alternate senses so I can feel pressures and vibrations, which also help me navigate and get to know my own ship while I am uh, doing that. Um, she has true sight and night vision, as well as um, I can never pronounce that word the one with the legs. I have long legs, I have animal like legs. Digitigrade. Yeah, yeah. digitigrade. Yep. Digitigrade legs. Um, and I don't know. Do you want to know skills? No, we'll get into skills later. Fine. Uh, so yeah, she. Uh, uh, yeah, that that's what I got. Uh, she uh, character-wise, I see her as a mix of Captain Amelia from Treasure Planet and Letty uh, from Fast and Furious. Um, because she's definitely not the party face. Um, I, uh, have a persuasion of one, uh, and a negative to go along with it. She is blunt as the day is long, um, and she just doesn't care what you think. Excellent. Now, Key, you've played with me before. What, where, where are you thinking of going for this game? Well, this is kind of awkward. I had originally intended to make a Varen kin myself, my built of the sheet, but it's fine. I'm now playing a Dijin kin, uh, a Fuhrer mystic, with other qualities that we will figure out later in the night. That's, that's, what, that's what we like. We like to do it that's together. That's how this goes. For me. <laughs> yeah, the best stuff comes out of these. All right. All right. Uh, Mayor. Hi. Um, Mayor has never played before. 
I've never played before. I've also never played before, just, just to let you guys know. You, you have insider information and guidance, though. It's the first <laughs> week of school for me. I'm a potato. Um, <laughs> but uh, I did, as I was kind of looking through everything, refreshing myself, um, just so that it might make sense for our characters to have crossed paths at some point. Um, I like the idea of either a merchant or artisan type, perhaps a uh, like a femme fatale feeling, uh, perhaps former thespian, like a performer of some type who has connections across, I guess we go to multiple worlds in this, correct? Like, think- yes, we will. Yes. Okay, so think like in Serenity, the companions within that. Um, something within there, but seeing all the cool different like body shapes and stuff, I would like it to eventually come up with some sort of really cool, whether it's, uh, or some of the ones I wrote down, like either like additional arms or uh, what was the other one? It was additional arms or like fur, feathers, piscine, something so it's like cool skin, Mm -hmm. something very eye-catching. And with that, then presence, persuasion, and awareness would be the focus for her. Okay. Uh, Corey, do you have a concept in mind yet? Uh, I'm, I think I think given what we got here, I'm gonna try to make an archer uh, of some sort. Probably Jonkin, probably Deep World Origin. So like crazy and messed up void being in some ways. Uh, but uh, I think I'm gonna take Ariel at least. Uh, but we'll see. It points are limited. Some of these choices yes. may may change in the next hour. Yes, point points are limited. Uh, we have never played with the depths before, so it is a lot of a lot of point value. I remember that you'll be able to take flaws in some of your lower trait values to give you extra points to spend later. Um, and also to remember while we're doing this that you don't have to choose one of the background packages. You can still be a complete human and still be void touch. So you can be a human, like Mara wanted feathers. You can be a human with feathers. Uh, we had one season, or what was it? Our first season, we had uh, Steve played a human lizard man, pretty much, that lost his hand. I still have it. <laughs> okay, so let's put some uh, let's put some numbers on some papers. So like I said, with your traits, the lowest number it can be is one. The highest that it can be is six. Your modifiers are as such. They are found on page 29 of the core rules. So if you only have a one in any in a trait, it is going to be a negative two modifier. If you have a six, it's going to be a plus three. So with each step up, you gain a positive number. And the number, the magic number we're playing with was 32. Did I write that down? 32. Okay, great. Wonderful. So you can be very equal. You can be high in one or actually a couple areas. It is completely up to you. How many points can we play with? 32. For... Just your traits. And that's the ones that are in the circle? Yeah, the ones that are around, yeah. I still have points I can spend. Damn it. Now, keep in mind a couple of things. You can only take... When, when we go on to the next uh, area and start spending the rest of our points, you can only take... Uh, what was it? Skills? forget the terminology myself sometimes. What? Uh, so you can only take flaws for um, traits that are three or below. 
and you can only and you can only take talents that are three and above. Would you like to hear mine, Duane, while people do math? Yes! An agility of six. An awareness of seven. A stamina of two. A strength of two. An intelligence of six. A personality of six. A presence of six. And a willpower of four. I have ancestry boosts, so I actually have 38 points. So, I have also figured out mine, and I have a question about flaws. Yes. Um, I'm reading this section, and the way I'm reading it, so it implies that you can put a flaw in any category, regardless of the number, but the value of the flaw can't be more than the points in the tree. Am I reading that correctly? So, it has to be a three or lower trait. So if your trait score is three, then you can take one mild flaw. If it's two, then you can take two mild or one moderate. Okay, so I just can't put a flaw in, like, because uh, I wanted to take a willpower flaw, but my willpower is six. Right. Okay. It has, it has to be in areas that you already are bad at. <laughs> okay. You can take up to three flaws. However, and I think we did this wrong our last season, you can only have one flaw in each uh, in each category. So, like, you can't have two willpower flaws. Correct. You can have more talents, but not flaws. However, the catch with talents, and you may have just said it, but I was looking at math, is every three points of the attribute is one talent. So at three, and then at six, and then at nine, and then at twelve. Correct. There are flaws on page, starting on page 34 of the core, but we also have new flaws mm -hmm. that start on, I have no idea, in the character options. Page 20-something. You should all definitely check out the character options, because it's the sexy new book coming with the new campaign we're playing, and it's got a lot of cool shit in it. Like Varen, Ken, and Jin. I have a question, and this may just be because I'm bad at math. Yes, okay. <laughs> so, uh, 32, that goes in the circles that have, that are around experience point. Does that 32 go to other things as well? I think no. that we probably, no? no? Just those. And, but it can't be more than six? It can't be more than six. Or less than and, one. Or less than one, yeah. You have to spend, you have to start out spending eight automatically. Yeah. So essentially, you don't really have 32. Because <laughs> you what have you to put them 30? all at 1, and that counts off your 32. Because they start at 0. Okay, they start at 0, and then so like if I put 1 in each, then that's a total of that's eight. 8. points. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. I can math, I promise, guys. You're going to want to lean heavy into strength and stamina, probably with awareness as your tertiary most important for your pole master armor concept girl. Maybe agility, but pole masters probably rely more on strength. Oh, I had yeah. like, yeah, yeah, I had like, yeah, I need to judge that around from what I was just like thinking with this one, but yes. Yeah, mainly strength, stamina, maybe presence. Uh, not in the awe inspiring, but. Uh... Maybe fear? Yeah, intimidation. Like the attention getting, yeah. yeah. I kept like, because like I said, I was stuck between two kind of concept ideas for this, so. There's an intimidation talent. Looks pretty cool under presence. I kind of like the idea of, I feel pretty, but I can also stab you. Like, as a as There a you vibe. go. Also remember, much like D&D &D these days, you can have a one presence and a one personality and still be gorgeously beautiful. It's no impact on your physicality. Yeah. That's your all personality. <laughs> I you could also have nap. a seven charisma and be ugly as sin. Oh, yeah. What'd you say, Savannah? Uh, that I can't math. Oh. That's fine. 
me. Key, have you have you done yours? I have my traits figured out. What are your traits? My traits. I have a four intellect, five persuasion, five presence, five willpower, three strength, three stamina, six awareness, and four agility. Alright. Currently. Fairly balanced all around. There's just too many points to be bad at things. I know. <laughs> Unless you choose to be. But these are all maximums. I can't. No, even then, it's really hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like uh, that's. I think that's part of why my brain was like, "Am I mapping right?" Like. Yeah, you're. You you are adept. You are supposed to be we're very supposed good. Supposed to be good yeah. at stuff. Okay. Yeah, you've like, been around the block. We're like level. We're like level ten. Okay, like that's just because I'm sitting here. I'm like, I can't be this good. Can I? But I guess <laughs> yes, I guess can. that's the point. <laughs> they all think these are good doing until they start rolling dice. Yeah, so exactly. we don't we don't we, we don't talk about dice rolls yet. <laughs> to get we to all a... know how I roll. Well, here, well, here, I can I can put uh, I can put this into perspective for you. So you can have a you know a very good uh, let's say. You're very good at, uh, not willpower, let's say awareness. Mm -hmm. But then I ask you to make observation. If you don't have the observation skill, you take a minus three penalty. Skills are very important as well. Yeah, don't learn that the hard way like we did the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I see. So you, you, you may still get a nice uh, modifier to your awareness. But then you also get the minus three for not being an observer. So with skills, is it just one for one? Yeah. But skills is one for one, yes. But your first point just gives you rank zero. You're at a negative rank until then, so you get no bonus. You have to spend two character points to get a plus one modifier. Yes. And then it's plus one every point after that. So okay. three character points is a plus two modifier. All right. Cool. Also note, especially with weapons, some skills cost three points per rank, not one. But the base life skills are all one for one. Um, I'm done. Well, how 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 did you do? Also, well, go ahead. Sorry. That's okay. What's up? Uh, if you fill in your character sheet in Astral, it'll do the math for you on your modifiers. There's so, like, a character sheet. There is. <laughs> did, did, did yes. Okay, well, I did mine in a PDF. So. Yeah, I'm I'm drawing on mine on my iPad PDF because I can't. I I, I gotta. Blah, blah, blah. Anything with a six will have a plus three. Anything with a seven will have a plus four. Anything with a four is plus two. Anything with a two is plus one. For the modifier that goes in the little bubble. Yes. No. Four is plus one, two is minus one. Well, what do you know? If you have yeah, a, right. a trait, if you have, yeah, if you have a trait. Minus one, four is plus one, you're right. Yeah, if you have a trait score of three, you're considered average. Yes. Okay, okay. Mod modifier of zero. Um, okay, so I have, for me, I have an agility of six, an awareness of three, stamina four, strength six, willpower four, presence six, persuasion one, and intellect two. <laughs> it drops off fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, I went around in the circle. <laughs> Mary, you, be, you seem to be thinking very... Okay. Very, very strongly. <laughs> Mayor teaches history, not mathematics. <laughs> My numbers stay the same. It's when people were born, they died, and did cool stuff in between. <laughs> I mean, that is not an inaccurate description of the history. The numbers stay the same. Although that would be a cool assignment to like make a kid give like stats to different historical figures. 
oratory <laughs> plus one. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like some of them were like terrible human beings on the ethical end, but they could give a bang in speech. Rachel, did you give your traits yet? Uh, yes. I have intellect six, willpower six, awareness and stamina both at five, agility and strength both at four, and then persuasion and presence at one. Okay. All right. While everybody's getting their numbers and finalized. I think I have mine. All right, go ahead, Corey. Uh, I've got agility five, awareness six, stamina four, strength five, int five. That's persuasion two, presence three, willpower five. And I had a bonus three points from my uh, background of GM King. All right. Okay. I think I did math. Right, Someone in the audience check behind me. It's probably <laughs> wrong. All right. I have stamina five, strength five, willpower five. Presence four, persuasion four, awareness four, agility three, intellect two. Does that math? Yes. That's yep, 32, yes. That math. I did it! Okay, great. Cool. This was fun. See y'all next week. <laughs> <laughs> I did my thing and now I'm done. Alright, well let's talk about where you guys all came from. What world were you uh what is your home world? You have uh many different choices, all giving different benefits. Uh you have the non enlightened worlds, the enlightened worlds, and the void worlds. The non enlightened worlds are like your outer rim. You know, very savage. Most of them are uninhabited, but some of them do have small, uh, you know, small dominions. The enlightened worlds are your colony worlds or your core worlds. And your void worlds are Lahine, the one that you're on now, uh, any border world, and the deep worlds. Very turbulent, chaotic. Spell the world that we're on now? L L Y H N. Yep. It's not the name of the world, it's the name of the city. The city. Okay, really well, the city. The, name, yeah. the city that we're in. So I imagine my character is from a deep world. Or perhaps a border world. I'm gonna go with border world. So, as a border world, you are automatically void marked. Therefore, you can take uh, attributes and esoteric attributes. Nice. Yes, it's important to point out if you void marked, you get it doesn't specify it, but you get both the esoteric and regular attribute tree without buying the background. Correct. Oh, so I get those two points back. Yeah, you still have to buy the traits, but you get access to them for free. Yeah, so someone from a savage world who is not Voidmarked can purchase the background of Voidmarked later on. Yes, uh, Border World is Voidmarked. You are unnatural. So you get the unnatural benefit. And you are enlightened. We will talk about enlightenment later. All of the homeworlds can be found on page 21 of the core book. Mine is a deep world called Sum Tak Naren. It is one of the uh, far and homeworlds with beautiful vermilion grass and amber skies. The trees are part crystal. It's quite beautiful. The architecture, geometry, and physics changes randomly, though, from week to week. Sky turns right. malachite when it storms, and void rifts open. 
That's an awesome color. I uh, I just think that the vibe of my character would be from Lahan, like or we're from that main cosmopolis. The main city. Yes. So as a native, you gain three extra background points. Mm-hmm. And you gain the, I think it's a talent, indigenous sway. Uh, it may, it may be a background. I can't remember. I'm gonna just write it somewhere on there. Indigenous sway basically means that when interacting with the city of Lynn, mm-hmm. you get a plus one. Just in okay. most things. Ooh, thank you to thank my Betty. <gasps> What's Betty doing? Betty has sent me some feather inspo. So what was your home life like, Mary? We know what Kim and Terry's was in mine. What about you? Um, I think that being from the city, I think that a lot of this character was probably is she probably I imagine either in like that middling class or lower on the lower end, but making her way to could make her way through the lower ends of the city, but also interact with those above, just through her presence and her je ne sais quoi, we will figure out. Um, and, but I think that even though she probably had some support and things at home, she was very independent streak, wanted to branch out and make her own brand on things. Um, so I think that just, she probably thought that she would just live and die within the city and make her mark within it as long as she was there. Is your family successful? Sure. Yeah. I think having some, I think that, uh, given her, she would probably be like the person like, uh, I don't want to talk about my mom, but my mom also paid for my college kind of deal. Uh, (laughs) You're going to want to reserve a lot of character points for backgrounds. So backgrounds then. That's okay, you so get your money, your status in society, and whether you're actually educated. And that was what I yes. was looking at because I can imagine that I imagine perhaps her as someone who the the part of education never intrigued her. Like I don't see her as actually having been like highly educated in that intellect sense, but more in the social navigation and and then of course with with her talent with the weaponry as well just because it probably started off as like a fascination thing then went into actual understanding of her craft with it right Mm. you may have crossed paths with rashu magoo many times (laughs) (laughs) it's also likely we would know each other if you have picked the highest cast you can get in the backgrounds yeah, that's. Uh, I was trying to decide whether or not to go with the highest cast or that that middle one, but like pushing up against that bubble. Key, where are you thinking this time? I'm thinking. Hmm. I'm gonna be a city resident as well. Resident of Lynn. So then you too get those three background points and the indigenous sway trait. Or talent. Savannah. Awesome. <laughs> I'm paying attention, I promise. Um, I am also from a deep world. Um, I did not give it a name, um, but uh, I see her as a young street kid who like probably, um, maybe in a similar situation originally to what Rachel's character was, maybe not a failing colony, but uh, she definitely didn't want to stay there. Um, So she kind of snuck up onto a ship and took herself to one of the core worlds. Um, and from there built herself up um, 
of her own determination. Um, and just through her business and being able to be, uh, to take those harder jobs through the void, um, she's uh, a higher tier citizen, um, is very successful, uh, has her own business. Now, uh, did you choose an alien ancestry or did you go human? I'm human. So, in Black Void, humans are usually at the lowest, the lowest caste possible. They are the, the lowest of the low mm -hmm. among the aliens. So, how did you, I mean, in developing your business, how did you reach, how did you gain success, especially being from a deep world out in the middle of nowhere? That's an excellent question, Mr. Arbiter. <laughs> <laughs> Raw skill. Uh, um, it partially just skill, partially also. Um, she looks like this all the time. She does not show her face um, or her um, or her hair. Uh, she's always not disguised, but like this is her normal look. Like nobody sees her like unmasked. Um, mm. So it also, when she starts those business relationships, it kind of keeps people guessing um, because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a stubborn ass human and people shouldn't, you know, judge me based on uh, my species. Uh, <laughs> uh, and because of she's from a deep world, she was able to develop more of those um, senses and abilities to make her a high class captain. Um, and probably she was able to make her name by making a few like risky, uh, risky trips um, and able to just kind of like prove herself like you want it done, you hire me. Um, I don't care how far it is. I don't care what part of the void it's in. Um, I will we'll get there and I will make it back. All right. I assume you like you started out as like the the deck swabber that yeah. had had awesome void abilities to see the currents. Yes. And they just kept you on there. Mm -hmm. All right. Corey, where do you see yourself coming from? I muted. I was muted. Border world. Everybody's going border world, or everybody's going for the <laughs> for the good ones. Yeah. So my concept of this character is they're a conscript soldier, basically. Okay. Um, you know, taking whatever job to defend whatever they can, and just uh, trying to lay low overall. But the problem is, is that they float everywhere they go, so they stand out like a sore thumb. Uh, they can walk if they try really hard, but it's really foreign to them. you just rather not? <laughs> well, I, I mean, it. they float everywhere they go. But imagine trying to walk if you float. Be okay. like, you'd have to like specifically try to put your foot down. It would be very hard, I would think. Um, also, the character is Ariel and a reincarnation. That's, that's some stuff I've thought about. And that just leaves Mare. Or no, no, we oh. did Mare already. That is everybody. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now that we have where we came from and what our bodies look like. Uh, so, talents. All based on your traits. From this point on, we have a total of, I do believe, 30... Six? Six. Yeah, 36. So you have Plus total of... Bonuses yeah. from Homeworld. Yeah, so whatever bonuses you have, plus the 36 to spend in uh, talents, backgrounds, attributes, powers, and skills. It's a lot of stuff. 
uh, and the numbers can get very, very thin. So let's start with talents. Is anyone looking to take talents or has already chosen talents? Talents can be taken on uh, traits that are three or above. Uh, so I have taken uh, Composed, Vigilant, and Quick Thinker. And I have taken a Persuasion Flaw of Blood. Oh, okay. And we're gonna get along just fine. <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted Addiction, but my willpower is too high and I'm not gonna change it. Yes, if you do take Flaws, you get... Whatever flaw, whatever level of flaw you take, you get those points back to spend in other areas. So if you are horrible at strength and you take a severe strength flaw of three, you get three additional points to spend in either your backgrounds, skills, anything else. Yeah, I, uh, I looked at the presence flaws. Um, and nothing jumped out at me. You're the best, so I yeah. think I will just stick with Blunt. Hey, you don't have to take flaws. It's completely up to you if you want those those extra extra points. points. <laughs> Kill you. <clears throat> so what what were your lower what were your lower traits? What were your other traits that were low? Uh, just presence and persuasion. Everything 32 else points is, is a lot. Yeah, no, everything else yeah. is four or above. No, no it's, it's not. not. It is not. Well, it is when the cap is six in traits. Yeah. Well, dependent on some of you had taken alien, uh, you can go higher than six. Yeah, your gin should have something, isn't it? No, maybe not. Maybe it still caps at six. Because remember now. It actually caps five. a bunch of them at five. Oh, really? Yeah, it's lower than six. Mm -hmm. The awareness, That's persuasion, because... and presence can go up to six. That's because if you yep. started at the slave level, you couldn't get there anyways, but you could if you were a Jankin. So that makes sense. Yeah. Still technically higher than super base level. Hmm. I have a question. Okay, yes. some of these have... Hi, yeah, I'm just going to start every sentence with that. Um, but uh, most of these have, like, mild and moderate lit written next to them. Does that affect the number of points that we would get back by the choice yep. of that? You're looking at flaws? I'm looking at flaws. I'm kind of looking at flaws first and then figuring out where to go from there. Okay, yeah, How yeah. so your flaws. <clears throat> you can take a mild flaw on a three or lower. Okay. You can take a moderate on a two or lower. Okay. You can only take a severe flaw on a one. All right. If you take a if you take a severe, you get three points. If you take a moderate, you get two points, and a mild is one. But you can take up to three mild. You can only take a, up to a total of three points. Worth. If you want them to be temporary, you need to remember you can buy them off later, but you need points to do that. Yes. That's the thing it does not tell you in that section. <laughs> so I picked oh, up uh, I picked up Limber for a talent, uh, and racially I have the Blunt Flaw, regardless of... I don't get any points for it, but I have it. I also have only Flaws, Cramps, and Exotic Illness. No oh, you know what? I am going to take the social stigma flaw. Uh, in that uh, people suspect that my character probably uh, murdered a whole bunch of her fellow colonists, but cannot prove it. <laughs> You'd also have that if there was any hint you were a blood mage, that is. <laughs> you gotta take what you need from other people for that. Oh, yeah. All right. So this is a presence flaw. Okay. Uh, my presence is one. So how many points can I put in this flaw? Three. You can only, if it's one, you can only take severe. Okay, so, so if it has it's... to be three points. You can only take a total of three points in flaws. 
So like you can take one severe, or you could take three mild, or you could take a moderate and a mild. Right, but, but so if I'm... you only have a one in it, you can only take the severe level of any flaw. You can't take yeah. less. So if I had a two okay. in something, am I stuck in no. taking moderate? That only no, you could take moderate. You, you could only you could take moderate, or you could take the severe. Okay. All right. So if I have, so if I put a flaw on a trait that I only have one point in, that is the only flaw I get. You are muted, Dwayne. Muted. I I was. But yes, you can only take that flaw, but you get three points. Okay. All right. So then I gotta pick between blunt and social stigma. I think social stigma would match your character yeah. more. Yeah, I think you're right. What is the actual negative to that? Um, let me flip to that. Oh, they just uh, avoid you. <laughs> is there a place to put our flaws? I was just them? about to ask that. I was just like, is there somewhere this goes on the character sheet? Uh, I'm in my Wasta column. Hey, uh, yeah, you'll never use the last few Wasta. You'll never use the last few uh, enlightenment. enlightenment powers. Okay. Um, put All right, because that's not the only place they could go. I was so confused. I just kept writing it just off on the side somewhere. You can also put them under powers because you're not going to be a mystic, so you're not going to use those slots. And if you're using astral, you can just hit character notes on the left and you get this whole awesome thing that you can organize any way you want. Mm -hmm. Astral's mm -hmm. cool that way. Yeah. Uh, Mayor, what you were asking earlier, like, uh, so we'll take social stigma because we just did that. That one said, oh no, we won't use that one. We'll use, uh, uh like for, so are you talking about for my character or? Well, like, uh, for, for example, fanatic, mm -hmm. you can only take fanatic at severe. You cannot take them. You can't be a mild fanatic. It is, okay. it is a severe uh in the descriptions of all the flaws it says yeah, it has them listed with that yeah so like distracted can only be mild you can't be severely distracted oh but like so the one that i was looking at was oblivious which is basic like lacking literacy so i could be either mild or moderate in that correct, correct. yes so my person would be eligible to use the moderate level on that but if I wanted to just do mild on it, I could and get a second pull. If you have what what what's your I uh, score? A, I have a two in intellect as my lowest, and then three in agility, which I don't think would get me one. Correct. So for intellect, you can't take mild. You you can't take a mild flaw. You have to take moderate or severe. Okay. Because it's two. Yeah. It's, because it's two, so you either have to take moderate or the worse. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, so she can't read and write. This is good. Cool. Which doesn't mean that you're totally out there. You just can't comprehend messages or... Yeah. So under the, like, because the uh, mild one was just kind of like, can understand, but can't write it back. Moderate is any type of writing, pictographic, alphabetical, or numerical is beyond the character's abilities. Yeah, you're, you're just like, I, I have no idea what this says. They may never acquire the reading or writing skill. <laughs> Which is why she just looks at my maps. She's pretty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions on talents or flaws? I'm just going to kind of do the same thing. So for talents, what was the pool number for that again? One last talents, talents can be taken for 
traits that are three or above, you can take one uh, at three, another at six, nine, and twelve. Mm -hmm. So if you have a six and a trait, you can take two talents in that category, if you want. But if I only have fives, then I would only be able to take one, one talent. Correct. Okay. Thank you. And we're not limited on the number of talents, correct? You are not limited on the number of talents. However, talents cost three points. Oh, okay, cost three points. And that's out of that remaining 30... Two. Two. 32. Thank you. Oh no. I have mandatory overtime next week. So while Mayor and uh, Corey, are, are, do you have any questions on talents or flaws? No, nope, just all... limber and blunt. Limber and blunt. So I while... Most of mine and skills, I think. All right. <clears throat> A wise decision. Yeah. Um, do that. Yeah. I Thanks for the follow, had... Wombat Fuzz. Woo, Wombat! Yeah. Um, I had also picked up the flop blunt severe. You just gotta have a whole crew of blunt people. <laughs> well, no, I I took mine off. Now it's social stigma. But Corey also took blunt. Oh, blunt, okay. So uh, it's just the two of us. I didn't have a choice. It's racial. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I talk, you shoot. It's fine. I don't shoot. I swing. It's true. It's still fine. He had you chosen all of yours. I've picked out flaws. I don't know if I'm going to take a talent right out of the gate. Yeah, you can always come back if you have the points later. Uh, I've taken cramps at mild for strength. I've taken obese at mild for stamina, and I need to take greed at mild because of my gin and chest uh, gin ancestry words. Uh, so I'm greedy and don't move around too much because of my mysticism making up for it. Why get up and get a drink when I could just have it float over to me? I can That's just see this character just rolling around the deck. <laughs> <laughs> it's mild. It's mild. It's not like that. For now. Just a little. For now. For now. Could be a lot of cake in your future. A lot of cake. Yeah, a lot of cake. Hmm. A cake. Hmm. All right, let's move on to backgrounds. So backgrounds are found on page 40. Yes, 40 of the core. And on there are additionals in the player options for the Kickstarter. Hmm. I think those are all detrimental. Like those are all bad backgrounds. Hmm. They give you extra points yeah they, they're like flawed backgrounds but yeah. also the the races in the kickstarter book are are count as backgrounds the ancestries yes they do yeah of which i took jonkin and that's my only background so wow okay so mine's really weird so you can start with me if you want go ahead tyler do it I cannot take follower, residence, or resources at all to start. I am automatically Muwadi cast, and to get to Sarnesh is extremely cheap because it's not cumulative like it normally is. Uh, and I get Void Entity 3, which that was fun to look up. That gives me a whole host of nonsense, including resistance to all void effects, resistance to madness, resistance to fear, resistance to hallucinations, bonuses to all my mystic powers and triples the amount of void powers I get per enlightenment rank. Uh, I also have Educated and Sarnesh cast. All right. Uh, 
let's start with, well, let's move on to Rachel. Hello. Uh, looking at backgrounds, because uh, I've already spent most of my points, uh, there's <laughs> nothing left that I can afford, and uh, nothing that really suits, except maybe residence, but I still don't have the points for that. I only have two left. I'm going to point out to all of you, all, all the folks here who haven't played this before, if you don't at least take the bottom level of resources, you're going to get old sandals, a, a loincloth, and a rusty dagger. That is your starting gear. That is your starting gear. <laughs> and that's all. All right. Uh, in that case... <laughs> you have nothing. When they say uh, you start at the bottom, you start at the bottom. All right, dirt farmer. <laughs> you all need right. to have a tent. It in that case, I am going to move a couple points around. <laughs> uh, so, just making sure that I understand his skills properly. If I wanted to buy the first point in a skill, that costs two points? No, it costs one no. to go to zero and remove the penalty. No bonus, no penalty, just flat. That's the first point. Second point is plus one to the roll. So it's at rank zero, you get your full attribute bonus. You get no penalty. If you have no ranks in this skill, everything is minus three all the time. Yeah. All right. So if you have a rank zero of crafting, mm -hmm. you won't take a penalty, and you'll get to add whatever your modifier is for however you're crafting it, whether it be right. agility or But if intellect. I want, like, so if I want rank one in animal handling, that will cost two points? Yes. Two points. Okay. All right. Damn. All right. Yeah. Uh, These are harsh. It got expensive real quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're like, yay, I got 30, 32 points to spend on traits. So much. 36 for everything else, not so much. Yep. On the yeah. plus side, skills are the cheapest thing to raise at the low levels with experience. That they are. The modifier for higher rank skills gets dumb fast, but at the low levels, it's cheap. All right, so I'll move those around. Now I have one point and oh. a thing of resources. Uh, you can do cast or resources because you get better gear and money from your cast, too. And if you take both, then you're fucking loaded. Hi. Hi. Oh. Rich lady. <laughs> Everybody starts at cast zero, <clears throat> unless you choose a higher cast. All right, and so should we take a uh, cast even if we come from somewhere else? Yes, you could. Uh, you could have been a skilled laborer and you know be able to fit in with a uh, you know cast cast level three all right then i will or... take cast sharva for three points uh i would like to be a goat farmer <laughs> goats are so space cuddly goats. space goats space i goats are cuddly. rescued you from a well, dying colony for you to become a goat farmer hey goats are cool. uh what if they're floating full of blood? Good, because, you know, whatever they're full of goat. blood. Wow, they that are. got dark real quick. <laughs> Sacrifice them to gain the strength of the goat. Yes. Exactly. <sighs> that is why I raised goats. <laughs> the strongest creature in the universe. Is it a goat? It's a goat. Clear yeah. Yeah. They speak all they speak all languages. Mm. <clears throat> Badly. They can consume anything. Anything. Okay. Including Rachel's character when they finally rise up from all the sacrificing. Right. Mm. Uh, or, you know, any other small blood-filled livestock is also fine. Are the goats too strong now? There are many, uh, many interesting creatures in Black Void that you can also use in your rituals. Some, right. lar some larger, some smaller. Uh, creature TBD uh, as soon as I get to that part of the book, but essentially uh, I don't know, flying pygmy space goats. Fair. Whatever floats your goat! <laughs> exactly. 
go home. No, you can't stop me. I don't know what I'm doing, therefore I'm having my fun this way. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Savannah, you already went over your backgrounds in your introduction. Girl. Yeah, I did. You are the loaded high cast. I am. I don't like to be poor. <laughs> <laughs> my Feel person that. can relate. Um, and I also went over my attributes. But I can go over my skills. Sure, go over your skills. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, so I have rank one in all of my skills. I spent a lot of points there. Um, so I have uh, Comrades, Navigation, Survival, Trade Skill, Sailing, um, Athletics, and Intimidation. Um, and I also bought into Combat Skills of Blade Weapon and Dual Wielding. Okay. So, so I have a plus one. Plus one will help. I'm going to list mine mostly for key since we have somewhat similar attributes. I have Cryptography 1, Enquiry 3, Expression 3, Observation 3, Socialize 3, Intimidation 1, Occult Lore 2, Stealth 1, and Defense 2. There are no weapon skills. I haven't gotten the skills yet. You okay. remember when I didn't take any backgrounds at all? Yes. Uh, so I have acrobatics three, athletics three, observation and stealth at zero, uh, defense, which costs three times a normal skill at one, uh, bows at six with a precise shot and strong pull. Well done. Holy shit. And, <laughs> and dodge at six. And on zero. <laughs> I spent all my points and skills, basically. You're not gonna Jesus. have a bow, but you're really good at it once you get one. <laughs> they can keep the sandals. I just want a bow. They can care foot with a bow. I float. What do I need sandals for? So practical. What are you thinking, Key? I see you mulling over there. I'm thinking of taking a lot of intrigue and intimidation and streetwise. I'm going to be the bad side of, social of socializing. Do the thing or I kill you, essentially, is what I'm going for. If the honey fails, we break out the stick. I like it. Hmm. Yeah. What I have specifically, I'm not entirely sure yet. I know just intimidation and intrigue are on this list. No weapon skills? No weapon skills. Why do I need weapons when I can just go boom? Just checking. <laughs> <laughs> are Mare and I the only ones that are going to have weapons? Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, I took... got the bow out the, the ass. Uh, I, oh, there. that's true. I took two ranks in bow. Uh, I also took ranks in animal handling for the space goats. Uh, observation, rituals, and survival. So, animal handling one, observation two, rituals four, and survival three. Wow. <laughs> this this group is definitely way way different than their first our first group. <laughs> <laughs> like no skills. <laughs> it's only a D twelve. How bad could it be? We don't need skills. I mean, <laughs> who needs skills when you have points and blood magic? That's what yes, we you... thought. <laughs> it's like a roll. No, you, no, you didn't do it. Oh, also, I have educated, which means I take a very low penalty to begin with on any lore rolls. And that's one of the cool things you get from being a void creature. I also get an innate bonus to lore rolls, so... Only spend points on lore if you feel you want to. I essentially have a plus one to all of them, except to Cole, which is a plus four. Oh. Interestingly, being a reincarnation, if there is a skill I don't have, I can make a memory check to see if I have it at untrained. Yep. <laughs> that's cool. At zero. That's, that's, that's cool. nice. First that is nice. Uh, pivoting briefly to attributes, I get 
two points for free uh, due to the uh, border world. You're unnatural. Yeah. So yeah. So I took adaptive pigment. Okay. Uh, an alternative sense. Um, I think it'd be kind of cool to have. Uh, you know how sharks have that electromagnetic sensitivity, which is how they hunt. Yes. I would like that, please. Okay. Okay. I think I'm on to something here. I got distracted. <laughs> Hold because... on to your bootstraps. Mayor's got it. All right. All right. Well, because I got distracted because I had to find out how many points wings were. Because I want wings. Um, do, you want, do you want wings or do you want feathers? Both. Oh. Um, so I wanted wings. And so I, I went full in. Um, so this is going to limit other things that I'll be able to do, which is fine. Um, now, before before you jump ahead and I, I destroy your... I, I crush your dreams. What was your home world again? The, the, the city that we're in? The, the Lahan place? Lots of people in a city, I figured. That's an, uh, is that a void world? Mm -hmm. I don't remember. No. I would assume we're in a void world. The city is a void world. Oh. Because everywhere in the city, there's little pockets where there's yeah, void like it, Yeah, like, there's, like, there's void rift. All over the place. So am I not allowed to do that if, uh... So, you are not void marked or half-blooded. So no. you cannot take attributes. But you can buy half-blooded. You can buy half-blooded. It's one a point. background. Costs one character point. Okay. Point marked costs two. So a character point that's from this 36 that we've been playing with right here, right? Yes. 32 we've been playing with here. No, it's 36. So I take 36. one and I throw it into half-blood. And then you can now, buy wings. Now remember, you get three additional background points because of your home world. So you could use one of those additional points to pick up mm -hmm. half blooded. Okay. And then you can use your other points to get your feathers and your wings. Yes. I want wings. I have uh, some terrain, but I think we should go over them when we do enlightenment because they kind of fall in the middle of that for me. Yeah. Uh, Enlightenment. What does insusceptible do? Ins <laughs> it makes you resistant to the effects of the void. Very handy for a void pilot. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Is that an esoteric one? Yeah. It's under my benefits for Deep World. <clears throat> oh. Oops. That is a. Oh, that's one of the. Yeah, that's one of those ones that's hard to find. <laughs> yeah. It describes it in the world description. Um, That's what the search function is for. Right? Uh, I, I have it somewhere. It gives you a plus one modifier to resist the psychological effects of the void and a minus one modifier to all madness checks because the low good things are good on the madness chart. Yeah. Yeah, so plus one to psychological effects, fear and awe, and minus one to madness. Alright. Mayor, let's talk about your feathers and your wings. Okay. So how big do you want your wings? I was looking at that, and I think medium might be the size. Just, but I just scrolled right past it. Right. So medium would be the size with that. Two points. I can sustain flight for a limited time. Uh, can remain airborne for 10 minutes per stamina roll. While flight beyond that requires requires a successful stamina roll of six every ten minutes, and uh, I can glide at a ratio of six, whatever that means. 
You don't need to worry about that too much. Beautiful. But I can fly. I want to have. I want to be able to fly, and I want to use my pole arms to stab people while I'm flying. Are you gonna get feathers as well? Yes, they that that had like two on them, or one. There's it has one, like one, one point, a, one or point. two. I'm trying to just double check and see. It's cold um, resistance, yeah. or like wind with wind resistance, and it's plus one or two. That's the effect, basically. I will do plus one. Uh, the plus two also gives you a point of natural damage reduction. Oh, to go with two points with that one? Those damage reduction? I, I'm just saying it. If that's the way you want to go, it does give you one more point of natural damage reduction. I'll take that. Fine. I'm going to have to get rid of some other things somewhere, I'm guessing. This is fine. It's all about balance. Black Void is all about balance. It's all about changing your mind every five seconds. <laughs> Bug that's trying to kill me here. What is... I'm probably getting ahead of myself because I keep scrolling. Esoteric attributes, does that apply to only void marked people? Only void marked. Perfect. I can ignore it. Love it. Does anyone know how we can get to the second page on the astral character sheet? I was going to write in some of my skills and stuff, but I can't seem to get to the uh, page. I just scroll down. Yeah, it's just a scroll down. There's nothing in addition to that. Mine just stops at the end of the weapons. Oh, yeah, that's that it. That is the end. That's the Where, end of where's the, the skills? Oh, the skills are above that. They're actually under, right under your big bubble with all your attributes on the right. Background attributes and then skills right across. First one says untrained. Do not delete. Oh, please. okay. It's just like for some reason when I'm scrolling, it's like turbo scrolling all the way to the end. All right, thanks. <clears throat> Mine does that too. I have to just drag it if I just yeah. want to go slowly down. Everybody grunting. Yep. Grunting as you're calculating everything up. Okay, this one is more for Tyler, uh, Key, and Rachel. Uh, your powers. Uh, I know that Tyler already has all of his worked out. What spheres did you take? So, some of this is artificial, but I have Mystic 2. Varenkin's amazing. Uh, Mystic 2, Varenkin allowed me through Enlightenment to buy into Mystic without spending the initial entry points. I only have to pay to increase rank. Uh, I have Void at 4, artificially inflated by 2 points, and I have Mind at 4, artificially inflated by 1 points. They're actually at 2 and 3 for character creation costs. Out of a possible 5. Almost maxed out. As a Mystic, for anyone in the audience who doesn't know, that means... Key and I are opposites. Key's character uses raw will, force of personality to get what he wants done like a sorcerer. I'm the wizard. Meditation and careful preparation. My character views the void like the force. It can be dark, it can be light. You should live in balance between the two. So I use my powers accordingly. I will probably often look at Key's character and go, that's gonna get you killed someday, son. You're gonna get, I'm gonna Qui-Gon jit the shit out of you. Hmm. But yes, it's all mind and void. Void sphere isn't just navigating the void or sensing it, it's also fate and time magic. All wrapped into one yes. wonderful package. And then mind is uh, mind control. And telepathy and cognizance. Nonsense like that. Also illusion. An illusion, an important one. And, you know, psychic blasts. Uh, Key, what, what spheres were you thinking of taking? I am taking forces and life. So, main benefit of that, I could probably look at someone and send them into a river. 
mysteriously. You mm. say that like that happened before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? No, I keep. Yeah. You could also mysteriously compress a guy into the size of a dime. Mysteriously, yeah. Mysteriously. mysteriously. No idea what you're talking about. <laughs> no, no idea. But yeah, I'm probably going to be some heavy damage output and some good healing. That good healing. Speaking okay. of unrelated mysterious void powers, if you fail a mind roll, you could also mysteriously and accidentally become Rashu Magoo for an entire session. Mysteriously. <laughs> also, for the audience, uh, mystics can get uh, better bonuses to their rolls through meditation. Furors can actually artificially increase their power rank based on their willpower bandit modifier. He can buy one rank in a sphere and act as if he's at rank four at his willpower. Based on, based on your willpower. The flip side is it's far more dangerous to cast spells as a Fuhrer because you can cause void ruptures way easier. But we got you to fix it, so it's fine. Right. Yeah. This time you're the creepy one. Hmm. Now for oh, Rachel. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel is slightly different. Rachel is going with the blood ritual. Yep. Uh, I took two ranks of bloodletting, one rank of sacrificial divination, and one rank of blood rite. All right. So the bloodletting will allow you to create boons, for those who don't know. Uh, boons and, uh, what's the other word? What's the opposite of boons? Banes. Oh yeah, I was gonna say boons and bads. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, yeah, boons and bads. <laughs> boons and banes and fortunes. Uh, divination is exactly as it sounds. And the blood rite just allows you to get modifiers to both your bloodletting and your divination. Yep. Uh, and then there's also the potential for backlash, which looks real, real fun. Yes, backlash is backlash is for every everyone who is using some type of mystic power. Yes, it it hasn't happened often in our other games, but it is always a possibility. Is anybody else planning on taking any powers? I would assume that the point list is fairly low. Yep, I'm all out. I believe that everyone has already chosen their skills and paid into them. It leaves one thing. I'm doing the math, to no one's surprise, to make sure that all of this gets to work. And correct me if I'm wrong on it, but by taking a flaw, I got some points back, and I also got the additional points from being from that major city, Lahan. So for your home world, you got three background, three. just for background. Oh, just for background, gotcha. Just, just for background. Uh, and then the flaws you can spend anywhere. Flaws, and I got two of those, and those could add two. Well, yeah, which any anywhere. Okay. Well, while Mare is mathing, enlightenment. Actually, we can hit enlightenment in a minute. Uh, I do believe if you guys are doing the sheets on Astral, they should automatically compute your health, your sanity. Uh, let me close my notes. Let's see. Let's see. Um, mine are both at zero. Mine are also at zero. Uh, I don't think it's automatic. I think you have to fill those in on that one. Okay. So, your health is 
based on your size. So I want you to take your stamina. And that is the stamina is I think that's just the raw stamina, I do believe. Let me double check. Yes, your raw stamina. Is anybody larger than medium? Or is anybody smaller than medium? Medium is the average size. Does Unless your background says otherwise. Does my legs... I think my legs just make me faster. I don't think it makes me bigger. Correct. There's one specifically for getting bigger that you have to buy. Steve had that. Yeah. So for your health, you will just take your raw stamina score and multiply it by six. And then roll a d12 and add that on. And that will be your total health. Then maybe everything. Don't everything pull an Ambrose. Up. Don't do it. Do it. Last time we played Ambrose had a stamina of one and rolled a one on the D12. Oh no. Uh, Ooh, I rolled an 11. So, five. I'm sorry, was that stamina times six or plus six? Times time six. <clears throat> I, I, can, I can math for you if you tell I me got the this, numbers. I got this, I got this, I got this. <laughs> I've got this one. This one's easy. I'm still calculating up. I still think I'm technically short on a lot of my things below because I got extra spoofs, but I'm I'm not done mapping there. So stamina is five times six is thirty. Yes. Yes. And I roll this d12, and I got a ten. So forty. Forty is your health. Your total health. Is that good. Yes. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Cool. I'm not far behind. Mine is variable. I uh I rolled real well, so my total health is forty one. Nice. What's your stamp? Uh five. Nice. Ooh. Got twenty three health. And 35 sanity. So, wait, what was sanity based on again? Willpower. Sanity is willpower. Willpower times six, and then roll a d12 again. I got 42 for that one, which I think is an auspicious number. <laughs> In this campaign, there will be much loss of sanity. Excellent. What's the, that puts the me formula at 41. in that? Uh, sanity is willpower times 6 plus a d12. Same as the other one. Wait. Nice. We put in talents. Anywhere you can find a good spot. Yeah, right. there's no real. You could open up the character notes on the sheet in Astral and put them in there. If you really wanted to. I think we'll do one more thing. And then we'll take a break. And then we will finalize with our enlightenment. Make sure that all of our numbers are good. And then we will final finalize our characters. And then jump in. So, before we go on break, if you guys look at your character sheets, let me pull up one right quick here. Key, I am looking at yours, so... I am, am I looking... filling mine out on a PDF. So I'll I am at... as well. I'm just looking at yours just to, just to see. Um, so, your movement speed... If you're not using the... Uh, if you're not using Astral... 
will be um, your size factor, which everybody's medium, so it's just five, and then add your strength modifier. Five strength. So that will be your walking, your walking speed. The astral sheet will calculate that along with your defense, but then you have to add any special modifiers. Yes. And combat speed? I'm sorry, was that what you just said? Combat speed... Uh, yeah, combat speed and walking speed are the same. Okay, great. Apparently math wrong at some point had a plus 10, so I'm removing things. A plus 10. <laughs> that happens, right? You just carry the one wrong and... <laughs> yeah. I'm fixing it. Alright, so everybody's got their health, everybody's got their sanity, everybody's got their movement. Uh, your initial defense value, your DV, is the last thing that we'll do before we go on break here. For medium characters, your base is seven. Mm -hmm. So that's just the base. Uh, and then you will add in any type of modifiers, uh, like your agility modifier, any defense skill that you have. Any ability-based modifiers, shields, any type of that stuff. Is this where the sheet was wrong? I don't remember. Because uh, the sheet's defaulting to 10 as the base level. Is, uh, base, yeah, that's where it's wrong. Base should be 7. Uh, so don't I mean, use Astro. Right. Well, what? Mine's right, because it's 5 plus 3. No. No. Seven plus three is ten. So mine's right on my sheet. It's just me that. Keith's sheet is right, because his isn't filled out and has a negative, so it's seven minus three is four. Oh. Oh. No, I'm good, never mind. Apparently there's some math in for the miscellaneous modifiers. Ah. That would do it. No, that's not where we got weird last time. It was the armor where we broke it last time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were adding more armor than we were supposed to be. <laughs> that was impossible. <laughs> it was. It's like, how are you guys so hard to hit as novices? Armor, armor does not really stack in all areas. All right. Does anybody have any questions so far before we take this break and then uh, get on the finals? No, this is really cool. This Marilux. is really cool. I wasn't expecting to make a bird person, but I'm really kind of excited about it. You look so confused at the same time, though. <laughs> I am so, I'm very happy, but all like, you know, that scared happy? That's where I am. <laughs> all right, so I got 642 Eastern. Let's take a 10 minute break come back at 652 i hope everybody sticks around while we finish up our characters and dive into the beginning
We're back. Yeah. <laughs> Professionals. Awesome. Yes, so we are back. And we are finalizing our characters. We are going to finish up Enlightenment, all of our starting equipment and armor. And then hopefully we will jump into this game. So while everyone is looking at their equipment uh, tags, let's start with uh, our, our starting funds. So... Uh, on page 75, you have your cast level. So based on your cast level, you have starting wealth and starting equipment and property. I believe most of everybody was the Charva. I was I think I put myself under Muwadi. You got three Muwadis, pretty sure. Me, Meredith, yeah. Savannah. Yeah. Oh. I think so you got, you got a lot of stuff then. You got a lot of money. And then I'm uh, Call of Duty. You have the lowest of the low. <laughs> yeah. I sprung first uh, being in the Sarnesh cast. Because I'm born of the djinn. That is. Six points, and it's only in the new book. I was say, yeah, it's only in the new one. Same for Varenkin, except we start as Sarnesh and can move to Mawadi. Uh, other way. Mawadi to Sarnesh. Mawadi's higher than Sarnesh. Yes. Mawadi's top tier. Sarnesh is third. Second, third. It's on page 75. Numbers. 
I Can am you? looking at that, yeah. There's the Sharva, the Moadi, and then the Sarnesh. Yeah, Sarnesh is the highest. Yeah. Starting with 120 plus 40, 12, then a whole bunch of goodies and an income of 10 times 1d6. No. Oh. Yeah. It, it's You're a right. bit higher. Yeah. Wow. I can get much better armor then. Thanks, Key. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm just looking there with the starting fund. So, as Moati, I have the number 60 plus 2d10. I rolled 17. 2d12. 2d12. Oh, yeah, 2d12. That's what I meant. I'm just, you know, words, words. Um, but I rolled 2d12. I have 17. So, that means I have 77 is my starting wealth. That is your starting wealth. Cool. So, that's how many copper. Yes, copper game. Cool. You also have decent clothes, turban, or other headgear, slippers, or boots, a dagger of basic quality. Actually, everything you have is basic quality. Some supplies of your choice, a small stock of goods, and an alcove, shop, or stall. And you also have income. So while everybody's getting all of their monies situated, let's real quick talk about enlightenment. Because some of us are void marked or just get it because. So go ahead, Tyler. Tell us all about void marked or enlightened. So if you buy enlightenment as the background by itself, or if you're from uh, Border World, your enlightenment rank starts at zero which gives you void sensitivity as a special ability slash power slash talent. I was just there and I'm not anymore. Hold on. Uh, that is on... Page. 175. Uh, if you're from a deep world, you're void marked and you have enlightenment rank 1 giving you void sensitivity and void cognizance or drift as a power of your choice. You can go higher depending, I don't know, was, does Jankin have anything key for that? Uh, they gain two levels of enlightenment. So then you would be void acuity, I'm sorry, you uh, could buy void acuity, lesser void changeling, void erudite, void float, void halo, or void medium. Lesser void halo, sorry. Uh, there's a catch, though. Doesn't matter what you are or where you get your enlightenment from. If your awareness isn't high enough, you don't get it. End of story. Close book. Go home. So, your awareness must be three to even get the level zero power, even if that's where you were born. Mm -hmm. Your awareness must be four to get tier one, etc., etc. So, in my case, my awareness is seven, allowing me to obtain tier four, which I get. Because my world plus my species puts me at four. And here's where it gets weird. And I'm sure Black Void will probably retcon this because this is new material. But it allows you to buy with background points increase in uh, Void Entity for Baron Kin, maybe one of the others. I'm not sure. It's not the Jin, though. It's one of the other ones. I think it's the one that looks kind of like an orc. Uh, it's just the Baron Kin who oh, okay. gained Void Entity. What entity does the following things? And this is for Dwayne, too, because it's really weird to find. Mm. Plus three to defense, plus three to resist spells, plus three to overcome spells, plus three to resist the negative side effects of all void, and minus three to all madness check rolls for void effects at all times. The second rank of void entity gives you two powers per tier of enlightenment, and the third rank makes your enlightenment powers automatically ascend to whatever your enlightenment tier is giving me eight enlightenment powers at level four. Yeah, I broke it again, Dwayne, I'm sorry. So, 
I have True Sight Mesmerize from the actual powers list. Uh, what are they called? Esoteric powers list. Mm. And then my Enlightenment powers are Void Attunement, Void Sight, Void Halo, Void Tolerance, Void Diviner, Void Changeling, and Void Guide. Those are all rank 4. You can look at them if you want to know what they do. Void Guide, for instance, gives me a plus 6 to all rules to navigate the void. I can naturally sense its currents. I know where I'm going and I can sense rifts within like a mile of my radius or something. Void Tolerance is a massive additional resistance. Void Halo, I can turn on and off at will, and I can make it intimidating or awe-inspiring. It will literally strike awe into people. Uh, void Diviner is a mystic thing. Void Attunement's a mystic thing. Uh, void Sight is exactly what it sounds like. Void Changeling is full shapeshifter. I think that's all of them. The end. So there are two things that we didn't do last time that we will be doing this time. So your Void Powers can only be used a number of times equal to your Awareness. awareness. Per day. Yep. In game. Where's the enlightenment powers listed? 175. That's where they yep. start. I do not, however, have Veil Slit. And I think there's one more. Tier 4. Uh, yeah, Veil Slit. Now, do you have Void Changeling Lesser? No, these are all tier 4. I know, you must take Void, or you have to take, Yeah. for Changeling, you have to take a lower tier in order to get the higher tier. Yep, they automatically progress with Void Entity Rank 3. So okay. I would have had it, and then I would have gone up in the backstory. And if I ever raise Enlightenment to 5, they will all move up again. But, that would require raising Awareness to a higher level, and then Enlightenment. That's unlikely. Same with the Halo. You're supposed to have the lesser Halo to get the full Halo. I would have had it, and then it would have progressed. So everybody else has an enlightenment of either zero or one, I do believe. I've yeah. got one. No, I have zero. <laughs> Technically, I have tier zero. Tier zero, yeah. I can only Aren't imagine your deep that world, I have... Huh? You're deep world, right? Yes. You have tier one. Order world's tier zero. I can't because of oh, my awareness. You literally just... just told me that. I need a nap. <laughs> <laughs> Mare okay. does not have an enlightenment ranking. Do not. And I'm not sure if Corey does or not. Jan, can they do? Uh, we have the same do. thing, yeah. So. Uh, okay. Yeah, I got enlightenment too. I'm trying to pick my tier two power. I picked cognizance for the tier one. Okay. Now let's talk weapons. Everybody needs weapons and armor. Weapons are for people who move. <laughs> <laughs> I will defeat you, you to death you while sitting in my chair. That, you don't want to protect that gorgeous bot? My right, bot a needs to be to protected. It. I'll yeah, hire someone must... to wield the weapon for me. Yeah, you have to protect yourself. Someone else does the fighting for you. Mm. You're, You're very psych important. He's psychokinetic. He can just make a shield mm. from his chair. Yeah. I like to see people fight, though, so I hire someone to fight for me. <laughs> okay, so the weapons that you guys purchase are or have are based on their, qual their quality. You just want a basic weapon with no modifier. It is just the base price. Uh, if you are purchasing something of lesser quality, it will have negative modifiers, but it's cheaper. And it goes the opposite way. If you want something that's has plus 
a plus one bonus modifier or other type of modifiers, it is going to be more expensive. The same goes for armor. You can just get the most basic armor that gives you a base defense, or you can purchase higher quality. Now we are only going to go... As of right now, you can only get, if you do have the money, you can only get uh, not exquisite. What's under exquisite? Superior? Yes. Superior. So you could get superior based on your guys' level, but not exquisite. If you have the money. If you have the money. I can afford a terrible bow. <laughs> Same. Well, I'm getting a short bow, which is cheaper. Yeah, short bows. The base base is only thirty. I think I'm All gonna right. go with a glaive. A glaze. Four show for him. It's 34, or sorry, 35 copper as its base level. And I'm currently figuring out what, if anything, would be like to update that or just save my money and get like some shiny armor pieces. It's up to you. And now. Life is hard. Now, weapons can be modified uh, based on their type. So, for example, a glaive is a... It's a pole arm. It's a... Well, it's a two-handed. I think is what it had as its weird. So it, it has enhancement categories of bladed, general, pointed, and shafted. So you could technically get a shitload of modifications. Yeah. But those are all expensive because looking at it, to each enhancement, the cost would then double the cost of my glaive. Is, am I reading that right? Correct. And that is cumulative. It's not. Oh, so then, like, so let's say I got one enhancement, then it would go from like 30 to 60. So the next enhancement would then go from 60 to 120. Yeah. And I'm. Or 90. Uh, yeah, or, or yeah. Or what? It depends on times it, three with two enhancements. It oh. depends on it, depends on the enhancement. There's it some that are times it. three, there's some that's just times one. I want all this nice stuff. My eyes are bigger than my pocketbook. <laughs> well, you guys don't need to worry too much about weapons right now. Whatever you may have uh, in your starting equipment should suffice, or unless you just want to purchase something quickly. can always edit it after our first session however I would suggest getting some type of clothing if you don't have it is there a chart for that oh, armor armor on page it. yeah 106 where can we find uh, attack modifiers for your weapons? Yes. That 
is found on page What do you mean attack modifiers for no. what weapon? Oh, it's it's a thing in the on the astral sheet attack modifier. Oh. Okay, yes. So a, on something your something with your skill. So you have your your weapon, your type, your size of your weapon. The size of your weapon is pretty much your strength. If your strength is less than the size of the weapon, it's harder for you to use. Okay. Uh, I'm good on that. My strength is five, and the size of the short bow is three. Okay. Your attack modifier is going to be uh, for your weapons. It's going to be agility, I do believe, plus any additional pluses that you may have from combat skills. All right. So my agility is four. Does that make the bonus one? Plus one, yes. Okay. Let me double check. Should be right there. Definitely annotate your range on your sheet. However, we're not really going to be using maps, but range will help. Where is that? All right, so I can only afford a poor short bow. So it's going to be a minus one damage. But then I have strong pull, which negates the minus one damage. So I'm just... Do you want a loan? I'll give you a loan. No, no, the, you can just give me a bow later. It'll be fine. <laughs> just just buy, uh, buy me a bow after we, go to this, <laughs> after we go to this funeral. Buy me a bow. I mean, I'm a conscript soldier. I'm used to getting given the implements that I need. Would you be willing to become a gladiator? Probably. He, that sounds fun. Excellent, excellent. I'm just you saying, later. you you need shiny bird girl for hire. Or... Would you like to be a gladiator? Do you like paying me money? Yes. Interesting. How? Yes. Just gonna poach everyone before I can hire anyone for my ship. Thanks. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, your crew's been hired as gladiators. So they will now be fighting in my lounge. Listen, listen. Gladiators years. sometimes need to go on space boats. Yeah. Good luck with my actual crew, though. <laughs> Hi. Would you like to be a gladiator? <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> yes, Rachel. Your uh, your attack modifiers are your agility. Your agility modifier plus whatever your combat skills are and any other random ability increase that you may have. All right. So if I have agility of four. That's a plus and, one. Okay. And one rank of uh, skill in bows, that would add another one? Yes. Okay. Wait, Thank you. A, a one in bows? Or a zero in bows. One. I paid two points for it. Okay. Yeah. Plus one. Okay. Thank you. So plus two total. Yeah. Neat. Thank you. Numbers. Numbers are good. Okay. Numbers yeah. suck. Is where I'm at right numbers, now. Numbers are good. All of a sudden, I feel like I'm in character because it said that all like numbers and letters don't make sense to my person. 
I feel that on a spiritual level right now. I don't like numbers. <laughs> numbers are bad. <laughs> numbers. So small brain. Actually, you wouldn't even know that it's a number. It's just like somebody wrote squigglies. What are these squ <laughs> Like, the moment that someone tells her that every squiggle she's ever seen was actually writing in a language, she's like, Nah. nah. <laughs> what is that? These have meanings? What are these runes? That's the price for your meal, sir? Uh... I thought there were bugs everywhere. And everything's squiggly. It's good. I'm living this, like, trying to get my most bang for my buff life, and it's very difficult. <laughs> Thinking of getting a guard band of some sort. My <laughs> a guard That's animal? Funny. <laughs> a guard animal, something to protect me and fight people for my amusement. Well, there are a number of uh, a number of things you could purchase. Are you thinking of anything specific? I have no idea. Perhaps a. Uh, well, you want this to be a guard animal, right? Yeah. In the book, it says guard animals are a hundred. They are a hundred, and then it does not give anything else for specifications on what it is. Oh, allow me to, uh, allow me to help you. Thank you. Go to page. Let me find it first. So... Not all of them, but a good decent number of them would be viable, starting on page 364. The Adaru is probably your best bet. Yeah, it's, it's frightening, it's funky looking, I'll take it, yeah. Uh, there's a giant snake-looking guy, the Beak Boa. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you could have a pet gnat. <laughs> or a... Uh... Maybe a sludge rat. <laughs> Perhaps a wailing vulture or a uh, an urbat. All these wonderful beasts and more in the core book for Black Void. Get it today. Yes. You should go. Walk, don't, or uh, run, don't walk to drive through RPG. Buy it now. So get yes. to those clickety clacks on that keyboard, friends. Drive through RPG and then just go and check out everything else that they have on there for all your RPG needs. Not sponsored by Drive Through RPG. Check Discord real quick, Dwayne. What was that? Check Discord real quick. I have, to check my, I have to check my phone. I know. It's the worst. Uh, is that even a thing? Yes. <laughs> it is. Uh, three eighty-two. Or no. Yeah. I mean, I guess you could have... Yeah, what about that Rifts twin, Dad? What about Rifts, man? I have no idea. Where did you see this thing at? It would just be a commodity because it doesn't have a mechanical benefit. Oh. In that case, uh, 
I have eight gold left, or eight coins. I don't know, if it's just there, it's just there. You're okay. weird enough as it is. Okay. I'm sure you could manifest it if you wanted to anyways. Oh look, I opened up a tiny perforation and a bird flies out. A strange beast that they used to call a seagull. <laughs> <laughs> the seagulls. Stephen mm -hmm. Seagull. Is everybody all done with shopping? Does anybody have any more shopping to do? I have a lot of shopping yeah. to do off screen. It's mostly just. Yeah, same. I'm going to have to double check my math to see if there's a better way to do some of this later. Uh, I blew all my money on a short bow and a packet of smoking herbs. Rachel, what's your character's name? Okay. First name. My character? Mm -hmm. Now all. Well, it's in the zoom. Yes. All right, names. Na names. Think of names. Well, you all think of names. Tyler writes down names. I'm going to find an interesting song for this. Oh, there we go. That's a good one. Just means I so. Have keys and yep, renaming now. Lahim, the Eternal City, is where you have all found yourselves. You have come here at a request from a member of the Faradani Enclave. One of their prominent members has passed away. And your presence is requested at the burial ceremony. Now, you have all been to the Enclave at one point or another, whether it is for work or trade. Or maybe you have a friend that lives there. But this Enclave is the main foothold for the human race in the Eternal City. It's not the greatest looking in contrast to the rest of the buildings around the city. It is mainly wooden huts, straw, sticks. There are a few stone buildings, but they are very far and few between. Uh, for anyone who is a native of the city, which a couple of you are, you know that most of the members of the Enclave, like their Mesopotamian ancestors, believe in the afterlife and in a dark abode of miserable shadows beneath the earth, to which all the dead descended, regardless of status or position. You also know that they believe that the proper place for the souls of the dead is in the netherworld of the goddess word I cannot pronounce. Hey, just gonna say, yeah, there you go. Oh, Irish Kegel. <laughs> hey, Irish Kegel. Irish Kegel. And not in the realm of the gods. Therefore, graves are dug in the ground to provide the deceased with easier access to the netherworld. If one were cremated, it is as though the soul ascends skyward toward the home of the gods, and a human soul would not be home there. 
It is far more fitting for the soul to descend to the underworld with other human souls. As you arrive on the dock, most likely on the boat of Savannah, please pronounce your character's name. Elenia. Now, do you have a... What size ship do you have? Uh, that's a great question, sir. Is this like a, a giant barge, or is this like a giant junk boat? The boats are expensive, okay? <laughs> no, I mean like a junk. Um... It's a, it's a sizable cargo ship. Sizable cargo vessel. We will go with that. So as you as you roll up in this sizable cargo vessel, <laughs> you see that the funeral is. Uh, taking place on the mudflats outside of the enclave. Now, whether you, as most of you do know each other by some way or another, uh, Renasha, do you know any of the characters? I think you meant Unless Rishani. they did business? Oh, that's those are two similar names. Those are two realize. similar yeah. names. I can oh, change. No, no, I'm changing I my name. No. No, 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 Key. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> the unnamed character that is. I'm so sorry. There we go. I didn't Omesh. see it. Omesh. 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 Uh, do you have any connection to any of the other PCs? Unless they did business with me, probably not. I mean, do you deal in livestock? Were you joking about the gladiator thing? I'm not joking about anything. Yeah, probably dealing some livestock. Deal got fingers in a lot of pies. Mostly a hookah lounge or a uh, yeah, with a small oh. pit in there for gladiator fighting because of yeah. course. All right. Uh, in that, that case, um, like you would probably think of my character as just a terrible goat farmer because for some reason they keep dying. <laughs> uh, and I uh, probably also uh, spend some relaxation time in your hookah bar. Wonderful dimly lit lounge that I will name later. Yeah, so uh, I guess you would know me as a um, not a big spender, but a reasonably reliable customer. A regular. Yeah, regular. Might have had some shipments done once or twice by our void captain, perhaps. Very much business. Now, Perry, do you have any connection to any of our PCs? Uh, by business or relation. Well, if any of them would have reason to hire a, a soldier, yes. Uh, gladiator fight seems fine, though not necessarily my thing. I'm more of an archer. Uh, no. but, do you do things of dubious legality? Uh, I don't think the character has a moral standing with regards to legality, really. Would... Um, so they would have no problem doing shady deals would they have been in some sort of armed service prior to this probably like uh this is the fourth reincarnation of perry so it's also oh. possible that you may have known perry in a past life but they probably won't remember you 
okay. uh, from that, uh, if anyone is like old, this parry is only 10. Uh, they're born mostly uh, ready to go. Tyler, what is your character's name? Oh, I don't have. I don't have a. Yeah, it's yeah. I don't. Sure. Sure. We already. We already know your relation with everyone. Uh, Rashani, we know your relation. And is it not a wall? Mm -hmm. We know your relation as well. Okay. So everyone has some relation with the other. So as you see everyone on this giant barge, you know, you give each other nods, uh, unsure to each other how, even though you know each other, you're not sure why you were all called to see the same individual. But as the boat rolls up and you land on the and you unload, walking onto the dock, making your way towards the procession. And the distant thunder is it's barely audible over the pouring rain that's coming down. As you move further and further, join up with the procession, you, you, know, you all stand very solemnly amongst the other gathered mourners. It seems to be very simple. Many of them uh, just crying and weeping a couple of what you can tell to be hired whale women that are just paid to mourn but you do see a, a simple litter holding the shrouded body of your unknown person and it rests near it rests nearby next to a shallow hole and a heap of piled mud and clay. The downpour has soaked the linen so much so that it's stuck to the body. And it... You can see the body's sunken features as the body has been out in the sun for probably a couple of days. And the smearing of funerary cosmetics have been soaked into the cloth, giving a very eerie semblance of a skull. As you look around, you do see a couple of individuals that you may have uh, interacted with maybe once or twice. You do recognize the leader of the, uh, the Russia Galam, this Kun Ezhar. You recognize the leader of the Untainted. That individual is known as Arshaka. And what are the untainted? Give me a... Oh, this is going to be the first roll. First roll! Yay! Yay! First roll! First roll! Uh, just give me a uh, common lore. Or a cult lore, if you have it. I have no lore at all. Okay, so it's going to be a d12 plus your intelligence modifier minus three. Okay. Looks like there's no quick way. I'll just click the button. All right. Clicking the button on Astral. Yes, and Astral, if you click the button for the trait on the outside there's a little little button mm -hmm. and then because you don't have the skill it should or maybe you have to click you might have to click untrained i don't remember click on the so, untrained intellect my intellect is three so for me this is just going to be a raw d12 roll. it's raw d roll raw d12 minus three <laughs> three uh you've heard of them but you have no, you know, no specifics. I know, I know other people have better lore than I do. 
or friends, you might ask me. Can I roll it? Sure. Common lore or occult? 14. Yeah, so you know them as... uh... Now I gotta get it. Yeah, so you know them as uh, a very religious group that kind of goes outside of human norms. They are often uh, known to use many different types of blood rituals and other sorcery to create abominations. They're not very well received. However, they're kind of like the like the righteous zealots of humanity. They they alone believe that humanity can rise to cleanse the darkness. I would tell you they spill blood and call on the dark side of the void for their own ends. They know not what they do. They're meddling with powers they don't understand in an attempt to regain something they don't even remember they lost. Hmm. Short-sighted like many humans. Uh, and so at this point in our character's acquaintance, I feel like only Hashur knows for sure that Nawal is like eyeballs deep in blood magic. Yes, but I would also probably know you don't use it to raise tentacled horrors and merge them with humans to create monsters. <laughs> oh yeah, but people think I might, so yes. I uh, I keep that shit to myself. I would whisper quietly, unlike what you do. I won't say anything. I'll just nod and continue keeping an eye on this interesting figure. The one person that stands out the most is a human man by the name of uh, Raham. And you all know that he was the husband of the once, because you do not see her around, uh, matriarch of the Enclave, Tamina. For those who uh, played in our other seasons, you know that you had dealings with her in the past. She is now the one that is laying on this kit. Being battered by the rain underneath the cloth. So it's Tamina who's dead? Yes. Yes. no one wishes to speak with anyone there's there's some other rabble that that is around you know other not everyone of the enclave you see a couple priestesses of tiamat um a couple of unknown to you uh esoterics you know tamina was a, an influential person in laheen uh even given that she was merely a pureblood. Uh, I will approach Raham and just say, um, my condolences. She helped me once when I needed it the most. That is how she was. She always, she always wanted everyone to live together. And even though she watched us the most and he obviously when he says us he's saying humans it was her her wish that cast would be pushed aside one day and we could all live together it's a good dream she's in a better place now 
I say that knowing full well what the Mesopotamians thought about their underworld. (laughs) As he finishes speaking with you, he he tries to make some small talk, but you can tell that he's not... He's not not into speaking right now. That's fine. I'm not going to make him. I just wanted to say the thing you say at funerals. Uh, one of the priestesses uh, pushes out from one of the group of mourners and steps forth, very dark robes hanging uh, from around her form. And she begins the, the rites, the actual barrier rites. As she begins the litanies, she beckons Raham forth. And as he's, you know, begins to step forward and he sees his wife's body he, he begins sobbing he continues to step forward you can't hear what he says but you can see his mouth move he may be you know saying his final goodbyes you're not really sure but he takes out a necklace out of his pocket and he places it on the body Some of the other mourners at the right after he does that, they also do the same thing. You know, a, a small boy walks up, leaves a small doll made of mud and sticks. Another woman comes up and brings a bowl of strange exotic fruit. Others leaving their trinkets. And then the priestess turns to you all. They're kind of separated from the other mourners. And as she beckons to you, she says, The dead must be appropriately buried to descend to the land of the dead beneath the earth. Have you brought offerings to be buried with her? to be buried with her, but an offering has been made in her name. I have given the value of a funeral offering to a local soup kitchen. It feeds orphans. She gives you an eye, but you can tell that she understands what you mean. She turns like, the re- just like looking straight at her like what all this stuff is getting thrown away I did something useful I don't say that but that's the expression there's actually uh, one of the one of the traits I was reading would allow you to actually say that with an expression it's kind of fun <laughs> it's not that important do any of you others have offerings that you wish to place any words that may be said um Alenia walks up uh to the the side of one of the sides of the husband um and she's just like well it's good on you that you kept a straight face (laughs) <laughs> you didn't break down completely here are some stuff for her um, to go with her into the into the beyond whatever um, and she just pulls out like a couple of like um, rings and some necklaces um probably slips a dagger in there as well and like places it on her burial mound thing so as soon as you place it on that where everyone else has been placing them all of you start to hear this strange clattering sounds in the distance you would have first mistaken it for the thunder from the storm but it's oddly clear, despite despite the deluge. Strange. The 
priestess still looks at the rest of you, waiting. I'll lock eyes with the husband and draw out a happy memory of him and his wife in his mind and spin it into a poem on the spot and read it directly to him, even though the whole audience will hear it. With your offering again, you you hear the clattering, strange clattering noise. It's still distant, but closer than it was before. Roshani is mildly distracted by the sound of that, but has made a totem out of various feathers and shells and, and bones, and it's a very clearly some sort of protection totem that then she would lay onto uh, onto the burial mound as well and would say it would you know con- console the gentleman simply with um, something better than I can come up with now but um, <laughs> um, just console with uh, the, the life that she lived lives on in all of you and all of us who help have that memory. And bird bow and leaf. <laughs> With your large offering and kind words, <laughs> again, the, the ominous clacking sounds boom ever closer. At last, the priestess of Erskigal looks to Perry. Uh, Perry. Perry will take off their shoes and be like, they will probably be more useful for you to walk in the new lands you travel than for me. And with that, pla- yeah. with that placement of your offering. Again, you hear the ominous clattering sound, but this time it's no more than a hundred feet away. As you turn around to see where it comes from, you see a procession getting closer to the mourners. And through the rain and the downpour, you can just make out six maybe seven robed individuals with wicker baskets on their heads making their way towards the mud flats as they begin to move closer and closer you see that they have numerous wooden tags hanging from their robes some around their neck around their elbows and that seems to be the particular clack clattering sound that you heard earlier their arms and feet are all underneath their robes you can't tell if they're human or alien or anything doesn't seem to be any features at all Uh, those who are of Lahine. Give me lore. Common lore. Those of us without that, it's a D12, yes? Yep, D12 plus intellect. My, minus, minus three, three if, if you if don't have lore. Trade. Minus three if you don't have lore. I rolled a two. I have no idea what these people are, apparently. So intellect minus three plus whatever this d12 is yeah i have no idea who these folks are either um that's a three yeah you have no idea who these people are strange that they're wearing these odd wicker baskets on their heads i don't go to a lot of funerals it's awkward uh how are the other mourners reacting it doesn't seem like they have noticed them yet um 
I'm still standing next to the husband and Omesh hasn't made his offering yet. So she's going to give him a light elbow to get his attention, to get him to look over, to get his natural reaction to seeing the basket people. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to you're going to nudge Raham. Uh-huh. She's nudging Raham. So when you nudge him, he he looks up at you. And he sees that you're kind of like, like what's, what's, what's what's up? up? <laughs> what's up with the what's up with the wicker people? And uh, he just immediately bursts out in grief, bawling, moaning. Oh dear! And he's just protesting because he knows exactly who it is, and that he, he knows that his deceased wife is their target. You all are looking at him like, what is going on? He's just bawling. He like gets on the ground in the mud. His knees completely dirty now. He starts grabbing at at Omesh and I'm sorry, Savannah. Say your name again. Elenia. Elenia. It's gonna be hard for me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Omesh very disgustedly <laughs> tries kicking him off. Like, uh, pants. How dare you? I back Omesh. <laughs> Not to hurt him, but to be like, don't you dare hit a grieving man. Uh, but she uh, like grabs Ro- Roham. Yes. Uh, grabs like both sides of his face to like look her dead in the eye. And she's just like, you need to tell me how I can help now. He's just, he's in like a, in a complete panic. He just keeps saying no, no. And it, he tries to speak and the words just come out. Ah. And then he kind of pushes away from you as this procession is like on, it's like on the rest of the, the mourners. And the other mourners start to realize that they're coming and they all realize who they are. Uh, I... Raham Rah- Rah- has like thrown himself between this approaching procession and his deceased wife like he's in the middle of the road then I do the same it could maybe like seeing the reactions of everyone else maybe spark a memory in me and I can roll again <laughs> if uh, Lydia is getting in the way of what might be a hostile situation I'll do something too yeah Elenia Be- follows to- Raham into the middle of the road to make uh, Betty happy I will. I start to melt into the crowd. I might not know what's going on, but a past life might have. Can I try to recall memories to see if there's any? There you go. Yeah, try and recall that memory. <laughs> uh, what is that role? <laughs> Day, yeah. It just says recall. <laughs> it says they may make a recall memories in quotes roll seven. But that's for like the whole skill thing. But it just says that that could be a thing. Uh, all right, yeah. Uh, roll a d12 and add your. Shit. Uh. Awareness? No. Intellect. God, does that really have to do with memories? Though? Intellect with memories, of course. Yeah, intellect. Yeah. I could see willpower too, but. Yeah, intellect or willpower, but it's no, no, uh, it's not. I'll try to find the actual rule for it uh, (laughs) after this rule. We'll go with willpower. If I don't click a skill, does it work? Yeah, cool. That's a 13. All right, it's above a seven. So, yes, you have a memory of lore, but you still need to roll the lore. All right. Uh, so that's intellect. That is intellect, yes. But with no negative. I damn. Think the way I read it, your recall <laughs> memories is directly associated with the like skill or whatever that you're trying to like recall. Which was intellect, so it works out in the end. Yeah, so I only got a six on the the actual lore roll. <laughs> That's okay. A six is enough. You know 
because they are well known to everyone, especially in the Enclave, that these are the Ragged Catharsis. Catharsis. I feel like he's madly scrambling for a page number. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As all of this is going on, Omash just shakes his head and uses a bit of mysticism to float his exceptional wine over to the mound. Just plop it down. Yeah, so the Ragged Catharsis is a funerary cult that has a stationed in the inside the enclave it is actually in their walls i guess but they were kind of established before the enclave even existed they don't really have any interest in the human commune at all they sometimes are seen as a threat to the enclave but the Enclave is just kind of forced to tolerate them for fear of reprisal. Uh, a lot of times you can hear eerie chanting and the following of screams pouring out of their temple at odd hours of the night. Uh, what's their name? The Ragged Catharsis. I'll mention that name and call them a crazy death cult. I gotta give Betty what they paid for. So. What did Betty pay for? I bring the Cosmic Horror and Madness. <laughs> we'll reach out to the nearest void entity that's within 10 miles of my position and channel its thoughts directly into their minds. Maybe they'll stop coming that way. The nearest void entity within how far? 10 miles. 10 miles. In any direction that includes up and down. Roll. Successful activation of the spell. What was that? Successful activation of the spell. With a 13. So, there is another void entity within 10 miles. I was kind of hoping that you would remember this. And it seems that you have. Yep. So for a second, <laughs> as they, uh, as the procession is, you know, almost on top of all of you, all of them stop for a single moment. And you see that they look at each other, almost confused-like, and then continue forward. The nearest void entity was one of the octopuses that was underneath the sh <laughs> the <I> dark. <laughs> it's continuous, by the way. It's not instant. Oh, how long? Hmm. That would have given me. Ten rounds. Okay. That will help. Yes, uh, another thing that you would know, probably from now that the crowd has totally seen them, you know, they, the Ragged Catharsis focus on the purge and release from life to death. And they sometimes take the dead or the dying those that are, may not even be dead yet, they will take the dying to their temple to perform unknown rituals. It's actually rumored that they work for the unseen rulers. They continue to stroll forward and they push up to Raham. They say nothing. They've pushed past 
Abraham? Uh, they literally come up to like right where he is in the in the ground on the the road, the path. Mm-hmm. And you see that. Uh, Four of them kind of break off from the six. You still have two of them standing in front of Raham, and the other four walk around towards the litter. Where the body is? Yes. Could I make the assumption that Raham doesn't want these people to have his wife's body? This is a, a, a good assumption. Uh, then I peel off from Raham, um, and I go to go pick up the body. Uh, so, Prashani can just kind of see that it's about to go down. Um, and knowing these people here and at least being familiar with the customs and what uh, Raham's intention is for the burial, just, uh, makes her way standing like between where um Alinea do I say it right? <laughs> standing between where like the burial mound and Alinea is and those uh at least two of the approaching people and her wings would flex out just like a, as she crosses her arm just like as an intimidation factor Mm-mm. stop Okay. So if they, Alenia, if they if they move past her, if she tries to touch her, one of them's getting thrown to the ground. Just FYI. So are you in front of the four or the two? The four. Oh, sorry. The four who are approaching towards Alenia and the body. Okay. Alenia, I need you to make a strength roll. Because this is only using strength, you get to double your modifier for strength and add it to a d12. Okay, so I can like do my miscellaneous modifier, do it as a three, and then roll my strength. Yes. Okay. We'll see if that works. <laughs> well, no, no, that's not how you roll. How do you roll? The number one button on the bottom bar. Yeah. The D. <laughs> well, I'll just do Sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. So you were able you were easily able to pick up the body. And as you turn around, you see one of them put out their hand, pulls this, this like ugly gaunt hand out from under the uh, the robe, and you feel this tremendous pressure start to push down on you. As you are pushed to the ground with the strength of eleven, he does not touch you though. It is as if a force is pushing down on you. Uh, Key, you immediately recognize this as some type of force sphere usage. I'm sorry, Omesh. Yeah, and that's not going to fly. But he is. So, I would like to use some forces of my own to accelerate him 10 meters in, say, up. Just throw him 10 meters up. 10 meters up. <clears throat> Make that roll. You remember how <sighs> Do you, do you remember how to do it? I remember how to do it. Okay. But it didn't go well. It didn't go well. 
<laughs> one. So just sit there for nine seconds, just staring at him intently. <laughs> and then maybe his clothes kind of go foof. <laughs> Uh, spell rolls recently. No good. So noticing that he, that you have attempted to use force, not not exactly the sphere, but some type of force, he does the same again. And again, you feel this immense pressure pushing down on your shoulders as like you're pushed down to the ground. Almost in a in a kneeling, uh, like like, uh, like prostrated position. Me? Okay. Yes. No yes. Omesh. No. no one else is doing anything. That's enough of that. I'll drop the spell I'm running and activate my halo for uh, Terror Nine. Terror 9, eh? My shadow will like like Gandalf, and I'd literally start glowing as I move towards the guy using the force magic, saying, that's enough. The voice booms across the landscape. The sky cracks open a little. So, everyone around you, what's the uh, radius of your halo? Uh, unclear. Character's ascension is evident by the glowing halo of energy. It exudes authority and power. You can create admiration or fear, and it affects everyone around me. Yeah. And... No, that's it. The end. It doesn't have a oh. radius. Okay. So pretty much everyone in the surrounding area. In the case of Averin, it would not affect people he's bonded to, leaving Millennia and Nawal immune. But no one else! Sorry, guys. So. I'm going to need fear rolls from <laughs> uh, Perry, Omesh, and Rashani. We're starting this out right. How does a fear roll work? Yeah. <laughs> a fear roll is... And John can get a bonus to that, right? Or is that from Outer Worlds, which I'm not. Can't remember. That's for Deep Worlds. B plus one. Which reminds me, it's actually not a yeah. nine. It's a 13, because it's three from my Void Nonsense and one from my World. So it's DC 13. Oh, even better. <laughs> uh, okay, I don't need fear rolls. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tyler, I need you to roll a d12. Did I get my void modifiers? Nope, I just need a d12. Eight. Okay. Uh. Rashani, Perry, and Omesh, you are all petrified in terror, and you lose one sanity point. Yeah, you're getting Oscar your money's worth, Betty. <laughs> Okie dokie, then. Right off the bat. Right off the bat. <laughs> so, total sanity. So, it would go down by one. Great. It would go down by one. All of the other onlookers, including uh, the priestess, all also become petrified in terror as they grab their heads. There is one individual that you see that doesn't seem to be affected by this. As you look at him, uh, as he turns and notices you, you see that uh, he is also a Void Mark Mystic. Uh, but he kind of looks reptilian. He merely shakes his head and walks away. Unless he's one of As... those people, I don't care. No, he's not one of those people. However, the catharsis do not stop.
the main one that was standing in front of Raham, seeing the majestic, you know, the majesticness of you. And again, you also feel, well, maybe we'll see. Yes, you also feel this in insane force pressed down on you. Actually, he gets minus five to his activation roll. Did he still succeed? Yeah. Okay. But it he might lower the effect. Mm. Yes, it's only strength ten. <laughs> <laughs> As you are pressed down, uh, you, you don't take any damage or anything. It is more like you are just pushed down to get out of the way. If I start feeling that, I'll, I'll activate Void Suppression and Dispel Magic in the area, which affects me too. But, you know, it's getting out of hand. Compose Roll? He has to roll Enlightenment plus Willpower. <laughs> Wait, enlightenment plus willpower? Willpower modifier plus enlightenment rank plus D12. Oh. Twelve. Eighteen. I rolled an eleven. <laughs> Alright, so his fails. No magic in this area for a minute. It's not permanent, but you know, it makes a point. And it also gives everyone else time to do something to the now human dude. Oh yeah, everybody also, starts running. Also time check. <laughs> yeah, I know. And we're a little late. Well, so we'll th then we're just gonna call it there because, <laughs> because I am over. <laughs> But don't worry, the catharsis will deal with you next week. It's even though you think you can break me. I, just I have want ways. One of these people to stab this guy. Oh, it, <laughs> it was about to happen. If you said they kept moving and I wasn't petrified, someone was getting flung. Pronto. But next yeah. Thursday, yes. Next Thursday, we will continue our journey in hopes of solving the mystery. You mean Friday? You or Friday? Oh yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> that's my well, that's my old one. That, it yeah, used to be Thursday. It used to be Thursday. My bad. But if you guys are looking for other terrifying tales, make sure you guys check out Mutant Year Zero, Cult, Divinity Lost, and Octon Cthulhu coming in September. But we also have Unknown Armies, Vampire the Masquerade on Sundays. Delta Green on Mondays and the Vorpal Chronicle of Darkness on Tuesdays. But if awesome adventures are more your bag, check out Deadlands on Wednesday, Star Trek on Thursdays, and make sure you check out the second season of Scarred Lands on Fridays. But that's not going to happen today because today we're doing a special eat nasty food thing. Yay. But before I get into my last little bits, I have to tell you guys something. I got to tell you about Tabletop Titties. Tabletop Titties is a queer and feminist TTRPG podcast and streaming group run entirely by people of marginalized genders. Their second season of their D&D show, Into the Revelia, follows their heroes from season one as they take on Hit Point Press's hilarious horror carnival, Hekna. Make sure you check them out every Tuesday on Twitch slash your twitch.tv slash Tabletop Titties at 7 p.m. Pacific time. Also check out their second show, Titties by Night. The Vampire the Masquerade V5 show starring a cadre of supernatural investigators as they solve mysteries in Victorian London. Catch all that vampiric action on Wednesdays at 8.30pm Pacific Time on Twitch and in, in podcast form on Saturdays. For more, inform yeah, for more information, check out their webpage, tabletoptitties.com and remember every time we say titties it's with double D's. And remember to check out our website, forbletales.com See our calendar, our social media links, recaps, and links to all of our partners and affiliates. Check them out to purchase awesome stuff and support us all in the same process. Because we love you. The players, let the audience know the next time they can catch you and the cool things you will do outside the show. 
Uh, hello, my name is Rachel. You can find me, Stolen Fires, pretty much everywhere. Uh, the absolute next thing I'm going to be doing is technically going to be at 9 o'clock tonight. It is going to be a character creation for the Rifts one-shot. Uh, however, that will not be live. Uh, it will be recorded. It will be available for our Patreon patrons. So if you're interested in watching a whole bunch of people from experienced to not, just go, what the fuck? What the fuck? Wait, what the goddamn fuck? Uh, for about an hour and a half. Uh, join our Patreon. Other than that, you can catch me uh, streaming Dragon Age Origins when it decides to behave on my personal channel. And then I will be back here for a live show um, running Starlight and Smoke, a Sabat Chronicle. Uh, we are winding down to the end game. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, and then you can also see me uh, Plastic Age Plays and Onyx Path on Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, follow my Twitter for more updates. I am Tyler, other checkers online. You can find me all over the place. Uh, hmm. Drunk one shot tomorrow. That'll be fun. Come check that out. Oh, hi. My name is Mirror. I was just kind of sitting there thinking, I was like, wow, we've got a lot of stuff going on. Um, hi, my name is Mirror. You can find me at Oh Hello Mirror on Twitch and Twitter. Tomorrow, I am finally going to redeem all of the achievements that we hit during our 12 hour stream or my 12 hour stream, including a bit of a yoga stream and playing some Kahoot with viewers. Um, and then on Sunday, I will be on my channel, but also Miss Miss Demon Fox will be on her channel and we will be playing some Stardew Valley. So come check us out. And I have been Omesh. I'm also Kisama. You can find me on Twitter at TrueKisama. You can find me on Sunday for Unknown Armies and on Tuesday for our Mage the Awakening Chronicle. Go check those out. It'll be great. And hey, I'm Narf Corey. Uh, and I was playing Perry the fourth. Uh, and uh, you can catch me next on Sunday for Unknown Armies and uh, also the video game I work on, Caves of Cud, Q-U-D, uh, will probably today or tomorrow be putting out a new beta update with a whole bunch of content for the end game areas and a uh, bunch of stuff for the uh, progression too. So check it out. And hi, I'm Savannah. You can find me online at Miss Miss Emo Fox. Um, you can find me later on tonight on my own Twitch channel, streaming most likely Subnautica. Um, <laughs> and then tomorrow, um, you can find me doing some multiplayer stuff, maybe with some people from Forpal on um, Valheim, most likely. Uh, Sunday, you can find me with Mare playing our Cottagecore Wise edition of Stardew Valley, uh, followed by Starlight and Smoke. Uh, and I played uh, Alania today, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right, normally at this time we would do it for the ride or die fans and do votes but since we mainly did character creation day we are not going to do personal votes however if the chat wishes to vote for someone they still can votes for the cast will be uh advantage on rolls however votes from chat will be something special it can be used for one of two things Regaining sanity or one vote is good for 1,000 units of whatever is needed towards a tattoo or a graph. Nifty. That's clever. Since some of them are like 12,000, so. <laughs> but it's still possible. It's still possible. So, wow. yes. <laughs> wow. But yes, one vote will be worth 1,000 units of whatever is needed. 
whether it's XP or uh, or DIN, whatever. More to come on that. But I vote for everybody for making awesome characters. And I hope to see this going awesomer later. Because I'm super over time, I'm going to just shut up and say, let's get out of here. I hope everyone had a good time. We'll see you guys later. Bye.